the, on the locally analytic vectors of complete cohomology. Um, so to motivate uh, our work, so I want to first recall some classical results about uh, classical module forms, holomorphic module forms. Uh, especially from the point of view of uh, automorphic forms. Um, okay, so recall that, uh, uh, so we have the H, the upper half plane. Um, uh, and the function um, on H, uh, it's called a, a module form of weight k. So k is an integer. Uh, if it satisfy the following condition, so our uh, first uh, f is holomorphic, um, another way to say this is it satisfies the usual Cauchy Riemann equation. Um, second condition is that so on H, there is an action of uh, SL2R by the usual Mobius transformation. Um, so then for any um, uh, gamma equal to A, B, C, D inside SL2Z, uh, F satisfy F gamma Z uh, is equal to CZ plus D to the K times FZ. Um, here, Z is just any point inside the upper half plane. Um, and the last condition is uh, some gross condition at infinity. Uh, so it's holomorphic at infinity. I'm not going to talk about this um, in detail, but um, you can also replace SL2Z by a congruent subgroup with, and then requiring it's holomorphic at each cusp point. Um, so from the point of view of automorphic forms, so a module form um, defines an automorphic form, uh, let me denote by phi f, um, gl to Adele uh, to c, uh, which is left invariant by gl to q. And uh, in this case, it's right invariant by gl to z hat. And uh, this function is a smooth function. Okay. Um, and also because on this GL2 uh, del, we have the right translation action of GL2R. Um, um, because this is a smooth function, we can talk about the Lie algebra action of GL2R. Um, so, so, uh, so this uh, for this VF, we can translate uh, 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 these two conditions as following. Uh, so for this holomorphic condition, um, in fact, uh, we can translate it as, um, in fact, uh, there exists an element um, inside the complexified Lie algebra of GL2R is simply just GL2C, uh, which annihilates this automorphic form. So we can translate the the usual Cauchy Riemann equation as saying some element cues this, uh, um, uh, this, uh, this automorphic form. So, and uh, I can tell you what x explicitly is just given by i1, one, one negative i minus i. Um, okay, so the holomorphic condition becomes um, this one. And then the second one, um, which usually is, uh, can be translated as saying this function, this VF has particular uh, k-type. Um, we can re rewrite this condition uh, as saying, so if we look at the elements of the form A uh, minus BI, BI A, so this is elements inside GL2C in the Lie algebra, and it's essentially just up to center is the Lie algebra of, um, of SO2, it, its action on this automorphic form is just, uh, just scaling by k times a plus b time. Okay, so th these two conditions uh, they really translate 
uh, into these two conditions about the actions of the of the Lie algebra. Um, so in fact, we can put these two things together together by um, so let me define. Uh, usually, it's different to know by P or P minus, but let me denote by B um, the Lie algebra generated by Cx uh, and and these elements. So in fact, uh, this is uh, a levy. Okay, so this is. Uh, in fact, that this defines a Borel subalgebra inside GL2C. And also this character, this character in fact, that defines a, uh, it defines a character um, of this Borel subalgebra, okay? Um, and so these two conditions, in fact, uh, um, we so can- your, your A, B, C, a, B are a real number? Oh, uh, complex numbers. Uh, a, B really, are complex numbers. It really doesn't matter, right? It's just the algebra action. So it's the linear okay. action. Um, so these two conditions now uh, can be rewritten as um, this Borel subalgebra acts um, um, this automorphic form by a character um, which I denote by mu k. Okay. Um, so in fact, uh, one can show that. Uh, so this is this is equivalent with um, these two conditions I wrote here. So another way to say this is that. Um, so. If we look at the mu k uh, eigenspace um, of automorphic forms, um, this is equal to just a classical um, holomorphic uh, module forms. Of weight k. Okay, so this is uh, the conclusion here. Um, so basically, when we study the mu k uh, eigenspace, we we get the classical holomorphic module forms. Um, so today, I want to uh, present uh, some results about the um, a periodic analog of this result. Okay, so. So everything is periodic. So this means I will replace the group GL two R uh, by the group GL two QP, and also I will replace um, um, the complex number C by the com periodic complex number CP. So I will simply denote by C, um, which is the Algebraic closure of QP, and then you take periodic completion. Um, and the space of auto uh, automorphic forms we replace by periodic uh, automorphic forms, but there's no well-defined uh, such thing. But uh, where a good candidate is the so-called uh, um, periodically um, completed homology, which I'm going to define. Um, this is, was uh, introduced by Emerton. Um, and uh, so we will study um, mu k eigenspace um, of uh, completed homology. And roughly speaking, the result is that we will see some kind of, some two, essentially two copies of overconversion module form. And, and, and then I will talk about some applications to even for study classical module forms. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to define completed homology before moving on. Is there any question? Okay, 
So the complete cohomology Okay, so um, to define this, it's better to use the dialectic language. Um, so, so for an open compact subgroup of a GL2 finite adults, um, I will denote by YK, uh, the open modular curves um, over Q. So it's complex points are are given by the usual double coset. So this is the upper and the lower half plane times GL2 finite Adele right quotient by K and left quotient by GL2Q. Okay, um, and we can consider its cohomology. Um, so to define completed cohomology, uh, I forgot throughout the this talk, I will fix the prime number P um, and to define complete cohomology, we need to fix the so-called the tame level and open compact subgroup uh, of finite dials away from P. And then for uh, any open compact subgroup of GL2QP, um, uh, we can look at the, the module curve K upper P, K, K of level K upper P and K lower P uh, and take is the singular cohomology with coefficients in Z mod P to the N. Okay. And we can take limits um, over all such open subgroup of GL to QP um, and then take a inverse limit over all N. Okay, so th this will be um, the completed cohomology um, of ZP coefficient. Okay. Okay. So uh, roughly speaking, uh, um, so instead of uh, you just, what, when you take the ZP coefficient cohomology on finite level, um, you first, uh, and you first uh, take, take torsion coefficient then the take limit over all level and then take some kind of periodically inverse limit. Um, so this is uh, much larger um, um, than if you simply take cohomology, QP coefficient cohomology, ZP coefficient cohomology on the finite level and take a limit over all levels. Um, so because I, there's no, no level now at P, there's an action of GL2QP. Okay. Um, and as in the, in the beginning, um, so I would say I, I'm working over C or CP. So let me extend our coefficient to that. So I would denote by H tilde I K upper P C as just the periodically completed tensor product with C. Okay. So this is some periodic Banach space over C. with a unitary action of GL2QP. And as in the introduction, we would like to uh, look at the, consider the, the action of the infinitesimal group action. Um, but, uh, the inf um, but because the action um, is simply continuous on this whole space. Uh, so to consider the Lyotard reaction, we, we can only restrict it to the subspace of locally analytic vectors. So I did know by LA. So this is the subspace of um, GL2QP, locally analytic vectors. So the, on these vectors, uh, the action of GL2QP, so locally you can find the uh, open subgroup and the action is given by just power, power series after you're choosing um, a chart near the identity. And because they are given by a power series, so you can um, talk about the, um, the, you can take derivative. So there is an action of the Lie algebra now. So G 
where G is the complexified Lie algebra, so just GL2C. Okay, so uh, as in the complex case, we now need to, a real case, we now we need to take a, a Borel subgroup. So in the in a model, classical model form case, we, we do not take a rational uh, Borel subalgebra, sub but here I simply take a, a rational one. So this means, so let me simply denote by B, the upper triangular matrices inside GL2QP and, uh, and let B be its complexified Lie algebra. So C tensor Lie algebra. Okay, so basically the matrices um, of this form inside GL2C. Um, and again, we can, we consider some special characters of this Borel subalgebra. Uh, so we consider again, so K is an integer. Uh, we look at characters which stands AB0D to K times D. Sorry, copy is. So this mu K defines a character B to C. Um, and uh, again, we, we can ask uh, what is the mu K eigenspace? So, so I forgot to say some, so most uh, interesting cohomology is degree one. So uh, from now on, I will just restrict it to degree one. So just to talk one KPC, L8, and then put the subscript K here to denote. Um, so this is the mu K. Uh, eigenspace. And uh, the goal of, of this talk is just is to determine this one. Okay, this mu k eigenspace. Um, but, but you have more than, you have more, what about other characters? Just this kind of thing. Uh, you mean? Is it uh, group mean, has many characters? Is it two? Yeah. Yeah, the, there are yeah others, but um, I mean, these are the most uh, interesting ones in some up to twist by some central character. So K is an integer. So when K is not integer, so first, uh, you, I mean, it, it has no relation with the classical module forms. So just some piadic, not piadic, but non integral weight. Um, so what to about, have. What about A, right? There's a, you also, the diagonal, you have two dimensions. Yes, uh, you are allowed to twist uh, by some central character then. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. just have to twist some central character. I can always make A disappear and. Okay. Yeah. Um, are there any other questions? Okay, so, um, yeah, so. It turns out to better state this, uh, the result, I mean, the, the structure, uh, especially if I want to keep everything to be uh, hack equivalent, it turns out it's easier just, I pass to, I take limit over all time level. Um, so this is, which I denote by H2 top one CLAK. Um, so we would like to determine this guy. So now because it, um, there's no action, sorry, the, there's no level away from P. Uh, so, so we would like to determine this as a, as a representation of, so it has the action of GL2, find out that that was away from P because I take, just take all open subgroups open compact subgroups inside GL2 AF for P. And that P, because I fixed the character of B, uh, of the Lie algebra of B, so there's an action of the Borel. And also there's an action of uh, the local Galois group at P. So this is because our modular curves can be defined over QP. In fact, can be defined over Q. And also, uh, we also take the diagonal actually in the sense that GQP also acts on over coefficients. Okay. Uh, so this is quite standard uh, 
and periodic hot theory um, to consider um, this kind of action, Galois action. Okay, now I can state our main result. The so um, GL2 QP will break this in, right? Because local analytic? Uh, no, be, simply because we we fix, uh, we take this uh, mu k eigenspace. Ah, uh, okay. okay. Yes, so that's okay. why you only expect to see an action of Borel. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Um, okay, so theorem one. So it turns out that, that the result will depend on whether k is one or not. So this is also quite like in classical case, so one case one, then um, it would be a little bit subtle. So let me first assume k is not one. So it turns out that, that so there's a natural decomposition of this space. So nk1 plus um, nkw with take twist by k minus one. So, the, um, so this is a natural decomposition. So it preserves all the group action and uh, and uh, you can think this as a Hodge state decomposition. So you, even though this is some infinite dimensional thing, but um, but you can think uh, that there's some Hodge structure um, on this cohomology group, and uh, there's uh, um, this. Uh, uh, this weight at zero part and this weight and one minus k part. So, and now, now I'm going to tell you what are these two parts. And essentially, they are given by overconversion module forms. So, let me first uh, tell you what this is nk up to. Okay. Um, so, it turns out this nk up to, sorry, uh, I forgot to say. So, um, I need to assume case not two here. When case two, you need to modify it a little bit. Um, then NKW is just M dagger to minus K um, tensor some character. Um, so this is a character um, of GL to a finite delta of A from P times B. So uh, this is just a character which can be given by very explicit uh, formula, uh, which I recommend to ignore it. It's really not important. The most important part is uh, is this part um, here? This is m dagger to minus k is over conversion modular forms uh, of weight to minus k. So I will give a precise definition later. Um, but um, for people who have never seen this, so this is some kind of piadic leech periodic generalization of uh, modular forms. Um, so, so classical modular forms some, somehow are defined over the modular curves and this over conversion modular forms are just, just defined on a subset. Um, I will give a precise definition later. And I, just, I must say here that it's slightly different from the over conversion modular forms uh, uh, in the usual sense because uh, I somehow enlarge it so that it now has an action um, of these groups. So it will be clear in the definition, but let me just say, I, um, this is uh, slightly larger than the usual definition. Okay, so the, the conclusion is that this, this part is, is simply over convergent module forms of particular weight. Um, now I'm going to tell you the other part is NK1. So this part is more or less over conversion module forms, but you need to modify a little bit. Okay, so it turns out that it's all, it also depends on k. So one k is at least two. Um, this nk one is over conversion module forms of weight k module over classical module forms and twist by some character. So, so this. Mk is just space of classical modular forms of weight k. So, so more precisely, so 
we have the open modular curve yk of level k and it has a <clears throat> it's not complete we can complete it by compactify it by adding cost and uh, let me denote by xkc the base change to our algebraic closed field c and uh, we can consider the the global section of the automorphic line bundle omega to the k and this is the the definition, the usual definition of uh, classical module forms of weight k and the level capital K. And over mk is just you take um, direct the limit over all open compact subgroup of uh, over all levels. Okay, so one case at least two, uh, this is. Uh, this is uh, almost uh, over convergent module form of weight K, but now you need to model all the uh, classical forms. Um, this is one case that leads to, so one K uh, is negative. So one, sorry, it's negative with one case zero, there's, you still need to modify it. But, so let me just assume it's negative. Um, it turns out uh, that this NK one sits inside the, an exact sequence. Okay, so now it's more than just over convergent module forms. It maps surjectively to over convergent module forms of weight k. Again, you need to twist some character with kernel h1 omega to the k um, twist by some character. Okay, so this h1 omega k um, is. Basically, you define similarly, you, you first take the cohomology of omega to the k on the finite level, and then you just take limit over all level. Okay, so by serial duality, it's essentially, uh, it's very close to just class, uh, class forms. Okay, so in this case, the conclusion is that this NK1 is an extension of over convergent module forms by something which is closely related to to classical form. So I would like to rewrite this as NK1. So this is an extension I would like to write in this way. So uh, it has a quotient M dagger K to some character. And it has a sub H1 omega K to by some character. Okay, so this this means a uh, this means an extension rather than a quotient. So so this is a quotient. And in the bottom, this means it's a sub. Okay, so, so this gives a, a full description of NK1, so except that I haven't told you what's the over convergent module form. Okay. So, so essentially, one case, not one, you will see a decomposition, and each part is more or less over convergent module forms of particular weight. Um, is there any question for this? So when you say weights, you mean the end of the action by B? Uh, I mean, the... the, the well, hydrated weights means the Galois group, right? I, I just yes. understand. Yes. Um, so, yeah, but B will act on these over-convergent module forms. So I, I, I would define later. I, I, okay. I would define it now. So. Uh, so that B, so my over convergent module forms is just sections of, of omega K and uh, there's a natural action of Borel on it. Any other questions? So, okay, so yeah, probably I should just define over convergent module forms. So, yes. Okay, so again, I will just define um, over convergent module forms on finite level, okay, um, and take limit over all level. So I just need to tell you uh, how to define the on finite level. Um, so, so here, so classical module forms are just defined over the the module curve and. Sorry, let me first introduce some notation. So I will use this notation um, to denote uh, the rigid analytic space 
um, of the modular curves over C. So it's so now you view it as a piadic manifold, uh, piadic analytic space, and uh, I'm going to define a subset called canonical locus uh, for for very special level. Um, and uh, so this is an open subset and uh, this M dagger K will just be sections of omega to the K, uh, which can be defined um, in a strict neighborhood of the canonical locus. So can I go back and ask a question about the splitting? Uh, yeah. So it's uh, it's not Galois covariant, right? It Even, is. It is. Um, but the so like the Galois representation attached to a classical modular form uh, yes. should be irreducible. But isn't it um, if you observe this, the splitting? Yeah, but because when you tensor with C. And uh, then it splits just the Hodge Tater decomposition. Uh, oh, okay, sorry. I meant, oh, it's only the Galois group of QP which acts. Is that what you're saying? Sorry. There's no Galois group of Q acting. Yeah, no, no, no over Q, just QP. Yes. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah, because, yeah, here, I mean, probably I should write this. I mean, because I, when the tensor is CP, I mean, there's no action of the GQ of GQ. Uh -huh, okay, I see. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but th that's a very good question whether there's some some splitting over Q. I I don't have any. Um, I don't know. Um, uh, so let me back to the definition of uh, overconvergent module form. So but what do you mean the canonical locus? You mean the ordinary? I, I would define. Yeah, now, now I'm going to define. Um, but let me just, yeah, let's just say it's just, uh, it's just sections defined on some neighborhood. And uh, so that's why classical forms can be viewed as overconvergent module forms. Now, now let me tell, tell you what's this canonical locus. So I will only define this for a very special level. So okay, upper P, gamma P to the N. So at, at P is just principal congruence sub. Okay. Um, so in this case, so so cause and Maser um, defined on using Dreamfield level st structure, they define now integral model okay, over OC. So in fact, they can be defined over ZP. Um, and uh, the spatial fiber, um, so it looks like um, there will be a bunch of uh, Igusa curves and uh, they will all meet uh, at a super singular point. And moreover, um, you can index the, the irreducible components um, by the position of the canonical subgroup on the ordinary locus. So in fact, uh, it's just map phi from Z mod P to the N to two to Z mod P to the N, surjective maps. Okay. So essentially it's, um, um, the kernel um, gives you the canonical subgroup. Um, so let me denote by C to phi C. And now I can tell you what is what is this canonical locus. It will just be canonical the- Canonical subgroup means the connected part? Connected? Yes, yes. Connected subgroup. Oh, um, well, I guess I don't know. Um, if I'm choosing gamma one p to, to the n, people usually call this part canonical subgroup. Uh, um, yeah. Um, okay, where am I? Okay. <laughs> Um, so this is the Kepler neighborhood um, of the 
the union of irreducible components um, such that maps one zero to zero. So basically it means the canonical subgroup um, is generated by one zero at the position one zero and you need to remove some part. So this C naught means um, you remove all super singular points. Mm -hmm. So basically it's just, you take all the ordinary points and you take and add cusps and you take their, their generic fiber and this is the canonical locus. Um, so it's, it's not, when the level is come up one P to the end it's usually called canonical locus, but uh, um, we somehow use the same name here for even for full level. And uh, one can check that uh, using this uh, definition, um, um, it will have an action of GL2 finite adults away from P and at, at P somehow because you choose, um, you put this condition here, uh, it will have an action of a Borel. And also this integral model can be defined over QP. So you have an action of GQP. Um, so that's why um, if you define over convergent module forms in this way, um, you will see these group actions. Um, is there any question for the definition? Um, um, yeah, so, so, so here we, one K is not equal to one, there's a natural decomposition and uh, it's not surprising because the Hodge state weights are not equal. So one K is not one, this is one K, because one K is not one, K minus one is not equal to zero. So one K is equal to one, then both are Hodge state with zero and there can, there, it can have self um, extension. So that's why one K is equal to one. We don't expect to see, um, a, de a natural decomposition, but rather we will just see a filtration. So that's our theorem two. So one K is equal to one. Um, so in fact, uh, th there will be a, a two-step filtration uh, there. Um, so in the bottom, you will see a copy of M1 dagger mod M1. So just over convergent module form of weight one module the classical form. In the middle, you will see H1 omega. And in the quotient, you will see a copy of over convergent module form of weight one. So. Okay, so this means sub and this is, means quotient. Okay, so it has a two-step filtration and uh, um, so essentially it still looks like quite like two copies of over convergent module forms, but there are some extension, non-splitting extension here because of the action of GQP. Um, again, you need to twist some character to make everything um, um, equivalent, but that's not important. Um, so this is the structure of one case equal to one so moreover, um, we can say how this is non-splitting um, um, uh, one GQP axon. So let me rewrite this thing, but now write into a three-step filtration. Okay, still in the bottom M1 dagger mod M1, H1 omega, but now let me rewrite this M1 dagger as an extension of M1 dagger mod M1 by M1. Okay, I just uh, pull out a copy of classical module forms. And uh, let me call this part. So this is subspace. Let me call H2 to one C L A zero. So I put a zero here uh, because it's better to think uh, this is the Hodge state weight zero part. Okay, these are infinite dimensional Galois representations. Uh, uh, it's a little bit hard to make sense of this, but um, so usually when we say what Hodge state with zero part, it means these are contains, I mean, it's defined by just stand by vectors fixed by the Galois group. So in fact, this is true here. So 
if you take the invariance of GQP, it will be inside this hot state with zero part. Okay, so at least it, uh, it satisfies this property, uh, which is really enough for, uh, for applications. Um, but for people who are familiar with paddy hot theory, especially sense theory, um, there is something so-called uh, classically so-called sen operator, whose eigen space, I mean, or generalized eigen space gives you the hot state sen um, decomposition. And uh, when action is semi-simple, just give you the usual hot state decomposition. And uh, moreover, classically, we know that sen operator is kernel gives you the hot state with zero part. Okay, so, and uh, in fact, uh, we can also make sense of cell operator here and uh, it will map trivial, acts trivially on this hot state with zero part and uh, sends this quotient back to the, co the copy in the bottom. So this is how cell operator acts. Okay, so that's why it's uh, uh, it's non-semi-simple here. Um, you don't get the decomposition, and uh, moreover, this already you can already see this is something about this non-semi-simplicity about cell operators when your form is not classical. So here, if your form is is an overconvergent module form but not classical, then you will see this cell operator is non is non-zero. Um, so that's why this theorem can be used to deduce some classicality results. So in the rest of the time, I want to mention several applications of these two results. But, uh, are there any questions for this? Can you somehow characterize like which extension this is? Uh, yeah, that's a good question, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So somehow, uh, I guess it's very, uh, uh, for GQP action, it, it's not that hard, I guess, but, um, but for the action of group action, I have no idea. Uh, but that's a very good question. Okay, so any other question? Okay, so let me just mention several ap applications. Um, so application one is about classicality of overconvergent module forms of weight one. Um, so just for overconvergent module form, um, in fact, uh, you can also define hack operators as usual. So uh, you can define TL hack operator. So all my level K, we we'll have a principal congruent subgroup at level P, at P. Um, so we can define TL hack operators uh, when L is unramified um, and uh, UL uh, if not, and especially in particular, we have UP operators, okay? So, so suppose I have an eigenform um, with all eigenvalues uh, inside QP bar. So they are algebraic over QP. Um, then, so we can, def um, by some periodic interpolation thing, uh, there exists a two-dimensional Galois representation associated to this eigenform. And, and the satisfy usual relations between TL and the, the trace of forbidden set L. So I'm not going to write the precise uh, relation. Um, so probably I should say, so um, when F actually comes from a classical module form, um, this, this attachment of a uh, Galois representation is just uh, the old result of the Lin and Ser. Um, in fact, that, they, they define this row F and they, they show the row F uh, um, has finite image. So in fact, there is an Artin representation. Okay. Um, so now uh, we would like to 
um, characterize one um, F actually is a classical modular form um, gives a purely Galois theoretic condition. Okay, so theorem three. So, so F is classical. F is classical. Um, if and only if um, rho F has finite image, uh, th this is still too strong. Um, in fact, uh, we can, this is even equivalent to the inertia subgroup at P has finite image. Okay, so just if it at P, um, it, the inertia has finite image, then uh, this theorem already tells you that F is classical and the whole represent, representation has finite image. Um, so recall that this by sense result, um, this is saying um, your F at P uh, is so-called uh, Hodge state uh, of weights zero, zero. Okay, so we give a classic the result for overconversion eigenform of weight one, um, just purely in terms of uh, piadic Hodge theoretic uh, information. Okay, so um, this is basically uh, a translation of this cell operator. Uh, it's non semi simple one. Your form is it's not not classical. Okay, so this is our first application, and uh, using this classicality result, we can deduce some cases of. Uh, uh, from the major conjecture um, in the irregular case. Um, so, sorry, I forgot to make a remark. I probably I should make a remark here is that we have no uh, assumption on uh, eigenvalues of UP. Okay, so the UP eigenvalue can be zero. So. Uh, if you're familiar with this kind of results, uh, so um, around 20 years ago, Buzzer and Taylor proved such a result under the assumption that UP, uh, I mean, F is ordinary at P or UP, or the same UP has a non-zero eigenvalue. Um, and here we don't need to assume um, the eigenvalue is non-zero. So that's why we can handle non-ordinary case. Um, so th this is our application two. Irregular case. Um, so I will just write down the theorem directly. So theorem four. So suppose we have a two-dimensional Galois representation, uh, which is geometric. So so continuous irreducible. Um, so so at for almost all L, this is unramified. Mm -hmm. um, and at infinity is odd uh, in the sense that the complex conjugation has eigenvalues one and the next one. And also at P, um, the inertia has finite image. And uh, we need to put some um, some mild hypothesis. Uh, I forgot to say, so here I need to assume P is at least three. Uh, this is the first place I need to put some assumptions on P. Uh, mild hypothesis on row bar. So essentially Taylor Wells condition, some generic condition uh, at P. Uh, and the conclusion is that um, then row arises from a classical um, modular form, sorry, eigen form. Of weight one. Okay. Um, so in particular, the, as a corollary, Joe uh, has finite image. Okay. 
Um, so um, my remark is that uh, this is already known by the work of uh, Peony and stuff. Um, but our approach is totally different in the sense that we never work with ordinary family. I mean, they, they always work with ordinary families and use non-zero UPI, uh, ordinary forms with, um, but we work with eigenform, UPI eigenforms with eigenvalue zero. Um, um, so our strategy, so I will just give a sketch. Um, so sketch. Um, so basically, uh, we first use Amerton's uh, local global compatibility. To, um, to show that um, this row appears in the completed cohomology. And secondly, we use um, Comet's Kirillov model um, to produce and our, and our theorem two to produce um, so eigenform over convergent eigenform of weight one. So comment this Kirillov model. So uh, basically from the, his model, somehow the, the UP equal to zero part is always non-zero for uh, a representation of GL2QP roughly speaking. So you can always find this kind of eigenform for free. And the uh, last step is just use our classicality result. Okay, this is a sketch um, of our, um, uh, how to use our classicality result, classicality result to study uh, fundamental conjecture in the irregular case. Uh, are there any questions? Okay, and the, the last um, application I want to say is uh, we can also character, right? We give a characterization of overconversion module form. Or eigenform, sorry. So this part uh, doesn't require weight to be one. So just for overconvergent eigenform of weight K, um, in fact, that we can always attach such a um, Galois representation. Um, and uh, our last result is saying, um, so, so rho F um, has Hodge, Tate, Sen weights, zero and the K minus one, okay? Um, so one, of course, one K is not equal to one. It simply means it's Hodge state with weights at zero and the K minus one. Um, so, um, um, but uh, uh, when K is one, we have already seen that uh, if it doesn't come from a classical form, then um, it might not be Hodge state. So roughly speaking, um, um, so, sorry, I forgot to say, so, so this is the eigenform. Um, and so roughly speaking, this means, um, so over conversion um, module forms, uh, I guess it's better to take UP equal to zero part, but uh, just roughly speaking of weight K, not equal to one. So parameterize um, 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 a Galois representations of Hodge state weight zero and the K minus one. So, 
So we have seen that for basically for classical forms, it is um, they are they, you see a lot of representations of which are Durham with couched it with zero and k minus one. But when you pass to overconvergent module forms, you will in fact uh, it gives you the you see the deformation um, uh, along the Hodge state. Uh, in some sense, the Hodge state uh, you see the Hodge state deformation. Um, so somehow uh, overconvergent module forms is more uh, more related to a Hodge state uh, deformations. And in fact, uh, we have a converse result. So, um, so, so if you have a, a two-dimensional Galois representation, let's say continuous uh, irreducible and uh, satisfy uh, like the properties in the in previous theorem. So, so um, and ramified uh, for at almost all L and it's all and also at P um, so um, Hodge state um, weights zero and K minus one. So here now I assume K is not equal to one and uh, also, um, I need to put some put a, a stronger condition that uh, it's now it's if you restrict that p is irreducible, um, but I, I, I guess it's easy. It's not too hard to remove it, and uh, also some mild uh, hypothesis on root bar. Um, then actually, um, we can show that rho arises from um, an overconvergent eigenform of weight k. Okay, so so essentially, a classical form sees the RAM ones, and the overconvergent module form sees Hodge six ones. That's uh, somehow the conclusion. Uh, there are only two minutes left. I don't think I have time to say anything for the proof so i would just stop here so thank you for your attention uh questions how do you prove them uh yes uh, so this you mean how do i prove which one the these main theorems or um, so basically, I need to study the, so to study this part, uh, I mean, basically, we need to study the complete cohomology. And to do this, I need to use, so shows us the uh, interpretation of uh, uh, this complete cohomology. Uh, sorry, I might need to take three minutes. So, uh, so, so. So shows a proof that uh, when you take inverse limit over all level at P, then there exists a perfectoid space, so-called module curves of infinite level at P, and uh, it has a so-called Hodge state period map um, to P1. Um, and somehow, <clears throat> and he proved that uh, the complete cohomology is isomorphic to the coherent cohomology of this infinite level module, uh, module curve when you take this cohomology of its stru structure sheaf. And also actually you can compute on the, on the flag variety on, on P1 just by, I will call OKP where OKP is just the push forward of the structure sheaf and the shows a proof that there is no higher cohomology when you do push forward. And recall that we studied the locally analytic part. So, so this sheaf has an action of GL2QP and we can consider its local, locally analytic part. Okay, 
So just subsheaf of uh, locally analytic sections. And, uh, and uh, the fact is the cohomology, completed cohomology, when you take locally analytic vectors, it's the same as you taking the cohomology of this sheaf. Mm -hmm. So the rest is just to study this sheaf and some other, um, roughly speaking, I can write down its sections explicitly. Uh, first, I, there, it satisfies some um, differential equation. I will call it some kind of piadic cauchy riemann equation. And uh, moreover, I can write down all the sections and uh, all the computations are essentially just done um, on this sheaf. Um, so for example, when you take B, uh, when you take some new K eigenspace, so you can try to first do this with this sheaf and try to study that. And uh, the rest is just to do various computations with this sheaf. But uh, I should say um, this is somehow is some kind of D modules uh, or D tutor modules. So on P1. So this is not too surprising in the sense that if you're familiar with work of uh, Karani and the Shosa, they somehow do similar things, but with l adic cohomology and they pushed forward a long state peer map, they get a perverse sheaf. And, uh, but here we do, when we do this piadic story, we get the modules. And uh, yeah, that's probably all I can say at the moment. This, Other questions? Uh, so in the in the overconvergent uh, case, uh, is this expected that uh, k not equal to one it implies uh, rho being odd? I guess. Uh, is it, there is some results proved by Frank Caligari? Yeah, maybe, but I thought that that's for integral ways for like um, the RAM I, hypothesis or something. I, I, I can't remember. So for all the work I did, I first need to assume it's odd. And then I know it appears in completed cohomology. I mean, if it's not odd, it never appears in completed cohomology and I can't say anything. So where are the where are the cues used? Can you do other like a total real field of Shimura curves? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I don't think I use uh, um, um so I guess one if you uh, you say quaternion algebra is still split at P, then you can still do, uh, I guess it's almost the same thing, but uh, if it's not, then it will be different. But uh, so first I will say results, you, you still expect to, you still will get this kind of result. So uh, for Shimura curve, uh, there's this decomposition exists for some, for, for some formal reasons. Um, and then I guess you still will see this kind of thing, but then you have to make sense what's over convergent module forms in that case. And once you make sense of this, um, then I guess the results are parallel. Um, um, but if it's not Q, it, um, you might have several places uh, above P, um, then the result will be more complicated. So here, my group at P is simply gl 2 QP. So it's, it's still, I, I mean, you could, it's just, you will just see two copies there. But uh, for example, for Hubert. So when you say split in mean the P split, the quaternion algebra is split in the field. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, mean, uh, I was saying quaternion algebra, sorry. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, so when you field, uh, I guess, um, I just want to say the cohomology itself will be more complicated. Um, and also, I mean, you don't expect to see as simple as this kind of thing. And also there's a, 
Um, a more related question is that when you say locally analytic vectors, in fact, uh, when you group, uh, uh, I mean, if you have more places over P, uh, if, I mean, if it's a, an extension over QP, then you have, you can talk about QP analytic vectors or let's say the, the, the few, finite few extension is K, uh, sorry, F, then you can talk about F analytic. So there will be different notions of analytic. And I guess when you take F analytic vectors, it will look very similar to he results here. But if you still take QP analytic vectors, it will be much more complicated. Um, I haven't done those computations, but this is what I have in mind at this moment. In your theorem four, you you put p greater than three. Uh, what is there any? What's the fundamental obstruction? Uh, yeah, that's a very good question. So I guess um, the place I use p is uh, not equal to. Uh, so I can put p, p equal to. He, to here, but then I need to put more restricted hypothesis on root bar. That's probably the only thing I need. Um, just one piece, at least three, is not that, it's, it's relatively mild. But uh, one piece two, then you need to put more hypothesis. But you still can prove a lot of cases. Thank you. You're welcome. So if there is no more question, let's thanks to you again. So um, yeah, I, I have no question. So so my, so my question has two parts, right? So one question is about your quaternion, quaternion, a Schumacher curve over a cube, right? There is a P non-split. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. In that part, that's very, that part, I don't have a, a notion of a ordinary locacy, right? In everything super singular. Uh, wait, but you still can, so you still. Uh, it's slightly better than the cross, cross uh, singular points. Right? Um, Another problem there is a level, right? You can put a level and a string fair level, that's a life would be more complicated. Uh, I should say, that's why I say you need to put suitable, you need to define suitable notion of uh, the, uh, over convergent module forms, but actually you can do that. So, um, um, the, the, uh, I stopped sharing the screen, but, um, but roughly speaking, you can still take, you still have a Hodge period map to P1 and uh, you can, you still have P1 QP inside and uh, you can take a, a point inside P1 QP, you look at this inverse image inside the, the infinite level quaternion Schmuel curve, and you map to finite level. Okay, it will just be some subset, some random subset. And then now you define your overconvergent module forms as sections defined in the some neighborhood of this, and that will be it. But mm -hmm. So in fact, I should say here, I use the Borel subalgebra, which is a rational Borel subalgebra, but actually you can take it to be other Borel subalgebra. And then you will, it will be things very similar to the case of a Shimura curve. And the over, you can still make sense of over convergent module forms, but it's just something which we, I don't think people have, have seriously studied before. But here it's just over convergent module forms because we are somehow more familiar with it. And especially it has Q expansion principle. And so we know a lot for it. And also it, um, for, 
for 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 classical multiple forms, there. I mean, the Borel I choose is somehow very special. Um, in the beginning, um, you can't you don't take the rational Borel subalgebra of gel two R. You you somehow choose the the anisotropy one. So I guess it's similar thing here. Thanks. Yeah, but for general Shimura varieties, I mean, you, your cohomology will appear in total, a lot of degrees and you will see cohomology contributing from different degrees. So that's why I say it will be very complicated. Even for hypermodular surfaces, my guess is that it's not as easy as the results I presented today. And if you get this result, this implies some fundamental conjectures. Uh, um, I haven't thought about that far. Um, in fact, the, already using ordinary families, people already prove a lot of cases. I mean, I just as I mentioned, uh, the results I present, I took, I say here is or it was already proved by Pilonisto. So mm -hmm. I don't think so far I can prove any result uh, beyond the ordinary. Um, yeah. just, just result proved by using ordinary families. 